Hey guys, and welcome to today's video. So in this one, we're gonna be reviewing the Apple Magic Keyboard for the 12.9 inch iPad. And there's a lot of things that we really, really like about this, and a couple of things that we dislike about it. And we're gonna get into those in this video and just talk about whether or not it's worthwhile shelling out like the 330 pounds or dollars that these things cost you if you get it for the newest iPad, or the 250 pounds that it seems to be discounted down to if you get it for the older generation of iPad. So let's find out whether or not it is worth that hefty price tag. For anybody who's got an iPad Pro or the newest iPad Air, the Magic Keyboard is probably something that has at some point come onto your radar for one reason or the other. Maybe it's because it's an Apple accessory and it's a first party thing and Apple tend to make pretty good first party accessories. Or maybe it's because you've just seen some great reviews about it and you need something that gets your iPad a little bit closer to replacing your laptop. So the first thing we're going to talk about is some of the things that we absolutely really do like about this keyboard. And there is a lot to love. But the most impressive thing is the build quality of it. It is just a, such a well-made keyboard. Now, when I've used Apple keyboards in the past, whenever it's been for the iPad, they've always been pretty mushy. The key travel's been relatively limited and it's just not been a very nice tactile experience for doing a lot of typing. With this Magic Keyboard, these keys are absolutely fantastic and they are a pleasure to use. If you've used one of the more recent MacBooks or the MacBook Pro 16 inch or one of the M1 Macs, then you are gonna know what these feel like. It's almost identical to that 16 inch MacBook Pro typing experience. There's a decent amount of key travel, well-spaced keycaps, and everything just looks and feels really good. As somebody spends a, a lot of time doing a lot of typing, the Magic Keyboard absolutely fills that void as a go-to keyboard. I've absolutely had a blast using it. And between this and my MacBook Pro 16 inch, there's not been too much to differentiate between the actual typing experience. So for somebody who does a lot of typing out there, this could be the go-to device for you. A lot of people tend to mention that tiny little trackpad on there, and yes, it is smaller than what we'd like. However, it never really felt particularly cramped. You could pretty much do all of your gestures on it. You can flick from app to app. You can close applications down very easily. It never really felt limiting in terms of space. So although we would like it to be a little bit bigger, it didn't feel necessary. It wasn't as though it was getting in the way of the functionality of the device. It's a very, very good trackpad, and I'd expect nothing less from Apple. They make fantastic trackpads. It's got a good click mechanism, and it never failed to register any key presses so I was really, really impressed with how well that worked. Gestures and everything felt extremely responsive, and if you're already used to using a MacBook, then you're gonna be used to that gesture lifestyle, and the Magic Keyboard does a fantastic job of nailing some of those things down. When it comes to popping it onto the keyboard itself, it's really easy to do so, and taking it off again, it all uses these magnets. You literally just kind of pop it there. You don't need to spend too much time lining it off. Pop it off pop it on again and it stays there it's, it's really well stuck on there it never dropped off it i never knocked it off you know you can't knock it from the side or anything like that he says and then probably breaks it but yeah popping on and off is really really easy it's very sturdy i like this kind of floating idea that they've got going on and the hinge is a pretty good it feels very sturdy once it's on your lap it doesn't really wobble around too much it's you know give it a good shake there and it doesn't fall off yeah and the hinge stays in place and doesn't really move around too much it's got a half decent range of angles so no complaints there and when it's closed that sort of front bit here feels really really yeah, and when it's closed, that front bit here feels really solid, so your iPad is gonna be pretty well protected. Now, on the subject of that solid base there, one good thing about it is there's not particularly any flex on it. It's, a, again, a really solid piece of whatever goes in here. So having it on your lap, it feels sturdy. It's easy to get it flat and just use it that way. It is a relatively small footprint, which again is good, and the center of gravity is kind of in the middle of the keyboard as well, so it doesn't really tip over, you know, if you kind of, knock it back or anything like that. It just kind of always rocks back forward. I don't want to push it too far because it'll probably fall off the desk. But yeah, it does a pretty good job of doing that. And again, same is true when it's on your lap and stuff like that. So overall, Apple have pretty much nailed it with this floating design here. It just keeps everything in that center there. If they tried to use a traditional hinge system, I suppose they would have had to make this bit much, much heavier. And ultimately, it's already heavy enough. So I'm glad that they opted for this floating design to keep everything in the center. One other thing that we really, really liked about it is the pass-through charging. So you have the USB charging on this hinge part here. And one of the great things about it is it's on the mirrored sides to where your USB charger is gonna be for the iPad. 
So on the iPad it's on the right hand side and on the Magic Keyboard it's on the left hand side. Now this is pretty handy again if you're using a dock or something like that. You've got that hanging out of here but you still need to be able to charge your iPad. You can then plug it into the keyboard and it'll pass through the charge onto the iPad. For me however the biggest benefit is depending in which office I'm in, so if I'm in here for example, Pretty much all of my charging is to the right hand side so I can just plug the iPad in and charge it that way. If I'm downstairs in the office then everything is always on the left hand side for whatever reason. And it's a bit frustrating if I'm using the iPad because then I have a cable and I've got to kind of snake it around. But with this keyboard, it just goes in there and it's tucked away really nicely. There's nothing hanging off the iPad, nothing that's distracting. It's just a really, really nice and easy experience. And then the absolute final thing is the fact that they've used this material, which is also one of the things that we don't like about it too much, but this kind of rubberized material. So when it goes onto a flat surface like this, it doesn't really move around too much so you know if you're tapping on the screen for example that stays solid it doesn't slide away from you it, you know you've got to give it a pretty good bit of force in fact it tips over before it moves and then if you're, you're on this it's not moving either so overall that's a really good grippy surface again if it's on your lap then it doesn't move around too much and yeah it's a really well designed piece of kit so to sum up the likes it's really really well made it feels extremely solid and the typing experience is absolutely fantastic and the little extras of things like the USB-C charger on there just kind of make it an overall a really really good bit of kit so let's talk about some of the things that we didn't like about it as much and the first one is it already looks really really grubby now I've only been using this for a couple of weeks now but this material it just it really picks up all of the fingerprint marks any dust or any dirt and it just it already looks really old and used I've also got some concerns about what it's going to look like in the long run because this bit kind of where it's all knitted together around the side so far it looks all right but in previous experience with the Apple keyboards that's the first bit that kind of starts to separate and it all starts coming apart and then it looks really grotty and it just looks pretty damn tacky. So it will be interesting to see how this thing holds up over time. Now it's easy enough to wipe it clean and get it looking, you know, almost as good as new. But I just wish they went for a different type of material. I get it, it's a bit of an Apple aesthetic. But overall, apart from the grippiness, which is fantastic, it's just, yeah, it's going to age pretty badly in my opinion. The other thing that I dislike about this, and this is more because I tend to have maybe a baby in my arm at the time, I'm really used to that one-handed opening. So when you pop it down on the desk and you've got the baby and you're like, please stop crying, I just want to do something else. And then you go to open it and you can't. It, even if you do get it up, it goes to like up there and then yeah, there, there we go. <laughs> it's not an ideal experience and I guess we live in a day and age where we've been spoiled by laptops that are really easy to open one-handed. Now it's not too much of an issue because a lot of the time I have the iPad like that so you can quickly grab it and go and just keep going but when it's like that and you just want to quickly grab your iPad to get it out of this case it's just you kind of do that and then you've got to flip it open and even sometimes when it's just down on the side then you've got to if you don't have a surface to put it onto, you're then kind of popping it open like so. It's just not an ideal experience. I wish it was just a little bit easier to pop it open. Now, it's very much a first world problem. It's not a showstopper at all. So, you know, you know, take it with a grain of salt as to whether or not that's going to bother you. But it's just one thing worth noting. And then perhaps the final thing to dislike about this is just the weight of it. Now, we're not too bothered about the weight because we used a bridge keyboard in the past, which is a really, really heavy piece of kit. However, this thing is very heavy. So if you're used to using your iPad without a keyboard or an attached accessory like that, then bear in mind that that is gonna double the weight of your iPad overall, which makes it a lot less portable. Now, it doesn't add too much in terms of width. It still looks really good in that respect. But like I said, it does become a very hefty bit of kit. You could definitely bash someone over the head with this. And yeah, it's probably a bit of a lethal weapon. So, hmm, better be careful with it. So in terms of the actual physical keyboard, that's pretty much a list of the things that we really liked about it and some of the things that we disliked about it. And that list is absolutely filled with a, a lot more things to love and like about this keyboard. It is a fantastic bit of kit. Great to type on, a great using that mouse and the cursor, and it just has loads of really good extras. There are a few things on there, like I wish they made some room for some function keys, but it's not too much of a showstopper when I'm using the iPad. It never really gets in the way of things. Now the question is, is this worth the $330 or pounds if you're buying it for the new generation, or the $250 pounds or dollars if you're buying it for the previous generation? And that really depends on your circumstances, because 
The age old question of is the iPad a computer? Apple thinks it is, some people think it isn't, and for some people it is a computer and this can absolutely replace your MacBook or your laptop, but for some people it can't do those things. So again, it's whether or not the iPad itself can fill that void that will take over your computing needs. The Magic Keyboard will do some wonders and it definitely helps using that cursor and some of the gestures and giving you a really fantastic keyboard, but it will not transform this into something that it's not. And that's something to bear in mind because this is a very pricey accessory and ultimately you're shelling out a lot of money. If you go for something like the iPad 12.9 inch and you combine it with something like the Magic Keyboard, then it's become a lot more expensive than just the base level MacBook or the MacBook Air. So you know what, bear that in mind when you're making your buying decision. If you already have an iPad Pro and you're able to do the vast majority of your work on the device and it's a really good device to do those things with then yeah pairing up the magic keyboard might make it a very worthwhile experience if not and it's just going to be something that you'll use from time to time then it's an overly expensive accessory that you probably shouldn't pick up however for some people out there who do the vast majority of their work on an ipad the magic keyboard is by far the best keyboard and mouse accessory that we have used with this device. It's an absolute pleasure to use. The keys are fantastic to type on. That trackpad, although a little bit small, is really, really responsive and the gestures are fantastic. And the overall protection and feel of this thing is just a amazingly good, well put together package. Apple have outdone themselves in our opinion anyway. And although it costs a lot of money, if you're already using the iPad as one of your main workflow devices, then this could be the accessory for you. So yeah, at the end of the day, as always with these things, it all comes down to your use case and what you need it for. If you're somebody who uses the iPad all the time and it's something that really forms part of your workflow, then this is by far, in our opinion, the best keyboard and mouse accessory you can possibly get for the iPad Pro or the iPad Air. If you're somebody who constantly switches back to their MacBook, or their laptop, then yeah, this isn't gonna fix those issues. There's a reason why you're having to use a desktop operating system versus something like iPadOS 14, or even iPadOS 15 when that finally lands. The Magic Keyboard isn't gonna fix those issues for you, so you know what? Bear that in mind if you're looking at buying one of these things. So as always, hope this video has helped, and if you've got any questions at all about the Magic Keyboard, throw them in the comments below. And once you're down there, hit the like and subscribe button, because it helps the channel to grow, and we really appreciate that. In the meantime, stay safe, and we will see you soon with some more awesome content. Bye.